What bad sleep norms or advice have you heard? I think the worst is you can sleep when you're dead. By far the worst <laughs> advice I've ever heard. And the one thing I still hear all the time. And my response back is always the same. But if you don't sleep, you will be dead. Right. So no, you, yeah, you will sleep when you're dead, but you need to sleep so you're not dead. Good morning, Jess. Good morning, Andrea. I don't even know why I'm saying it that way because I am in a freaking mood right now. <laughs> so I'm, am I, girl. Okay. So am I. We did the thing where we're like all upbeat and whatever, Hi. but I am, yeah, it's I'm not, not authentic. No, let, yeah, we got to dig in a little bit. So <laughs> I, I want to know why you're in a mood, but I will first tell you because I can't even like moderate my own behavior right now to give you the floor. I am in a mood. Because of the same reason I'm in a mood every single week from the beginning of time, which is that I stayed up too late last night. I you stayed up too late. To do that. I actually told you not to do that last night too. You did. And which I did now not I'm listen. I'm finding out that you didn't listen to me. I'm sorry. I, I like would have be been better. To. It would have been better if I had not done that. But the problem was that my kitchen was a friggin' mess. Like, I don't know who these people are that I live with, but there was just stuff everywhere. And I was doing the thing that I often do where I'm cleaning up and I'm just like filling with rage, you know, resentment against like everyone in my world is just filling up. And then I try to get into bed and I look at the clock and I'm like, God, Oh, I feel like I am living that Britney Spears song. Oops, I did it again. Because I, I did it again, and you did I it mean, again. Come on. You started I have to singing. Do my singing. You do. Which reminding everybody, I can't sing. Yeah, I can't. I mean, so I just know I was laying there, and I'm like beating myself up. Like, why do you do this? You know so much better. Let me ask you something. Yeah. How did that work? With falling asleep when Not you're well. beating yourself up. Yeah, Not that's well. what I was thinking. I'm like I know it's picturing shocking. the cortisol levels going through your body. Yeah, you might be right sleep. about that. So why were you in a mood this morning? I mean, for probably the exact same reason. I stayed up too late. And I've stayed up too late the past three nights. And yes. I got up really early. So I was like, okay tonight's going to be the night and mm -hmm. I'm not going to stay up. And guess what? I stayed up, but yep. I wasn't like angry or rage. I was just immersed in a TV program. What TV program? Okay. I'm watching part two of Bridgerton. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. I've so not seen I, it. Well, uh, yeah, I got, I got, uh, I got some things. I got some things to say about part two. <laughs> We might have to do a Bridgerton segment. I might have to catch up on TV. But that is one of the things that keeps people up is it's like finally time to wind down for the night and you've done all the things for all the people and it's time you just you want to watch Bridgerton. That's all I wanted to do before yeah. my you know what? And here's the thing, because the minute I close my eyes and I do fall asleep, then I have to wake up and do it all over again. And mm. so being able to just be nobody's talking to me. Nobody's asking for anything. I'm watching a show. I'm looking at the clock. Like I've got to go to bed. I've got to go to bed, but I don't want to do it all over. I don't want to mm -hmm. do it again tomorrow. I don't want to do it again tomorrow. I just want this time. And then I wake up and I'm crabby because I didn't get enough sleep. Yay. Yeah. Can I tell you what makes me mad about your story is that I have stopped watching TV completely. Part of it is because I can't get enough sleep. And I'm like, I wasn't even getting to do something fun. And I was up too late. I was kind of thinking that. I was like, oh, she had cortisol pumping through her body. And I had like, woo. Yeah, a little. I, I've heard Bridgerton little, is like, spicy. So. It's spicy. A little soft <laughs> corn. <laughs> you know, like right. when you used to go to cable TV at yeah. like 12 o'clock at night when you weren't supposed to because your parents told you you're not supposed to watch TV and that's when yeah. the good stuff was. Yeah, mm -hmm. now you just go to Netflix. It's true. It's, that is not a lie. So this kind of got me thinking about this study. I say study with quotes that's been going around the internet. The reason I say it with quotes is I saw this guy on Instagram. I don't know if you've ever seen this guy. He seems kind of like 
Eastern European and he's reading these things about women's health. And honestly, well, it's everything it's a guy. It, reading. It's a guy. It's a very okay. like Nordic looking guy who's reading these things in this very heavy accent about women's health. But honestly, everything he says is really good, but I can't get over the presentation. He's a dude. He's Sorry. a dude. I'm like, why are you the expert? It makes me very salty. But he was saying that there's a study, a recent study that's come out that says that women need an hour more of sleep than men do. And one of the things that I've been hearing a lot lately is that virtually no studies about health were done on women until recently. And so this whole seven to eight hours for men is really eight to nine hours for women and up to an additional hour, depending on where you are in your cycle. Yes. Yes. So there is an amazing medical doctor, um, Dr. Amy, who is... Uh, I, oh, Amy like, Shaw. Yes. Totally you love girl. your first name with your experts, well, yeah, Dr. Amy. Uh, because I just pretend we're friends. We're friends mm-hmm. in my head. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing sometimes up here. But Amy talks a lot about circadian rhythm in women Mm -hmm. and how we look at sleep patterns with men and all studies are done with men and women, depending on where you are at in your cycle, need more. Same with the whole fasting thing that we have going on, right? right? It's different for women. Mm -hmm. And we need a lot more when our hormones are all over the place. Absolutely. I This totally tracked for me, so I've taken it as a 100% gospel truth that I need more sleep than my husband does. And so I thought it would be interesting to take this question about how much sleep people are getting to our Facebook group, which is primarily women. And I got to tell you, no one is getting more than eight hours of sleep. Like literally no one answered our poll as I am getting eight hours of sleep. 31% got in that seven to eight hour window. That's me. Yeah. Me on a good day. 56% gotten that six to seven hour window, 12%, which was a significant number of people got fewer than six hours with a number of women citing four hours of sleep. Ooh, no bueno. No, no, I know. And this, I feel like the reasons why were really captured by this listener. So I'm just going to read her quote. She said, it's always a balance between how much there is to do in a day. I rarely get six hours of sleep. I wake up at 4 a.m. to work out because otherwise I would not have time, drop the kids off at 6.30, work from 7 to 3.30, pick the kids up and it's activities and dinner and getting kids baths, books, and bed. Don't forget, time with the hubby and most days not even a TV show before getting to sleep around 9 to 10, like you just said, just to wake up and do it all over again. My husband and I have a five and three year old and have really been trying to make time for each other again now that the kids are just slightly bigger and easier. It's a rough rat race out there, but trying to stay positive. How does this happen? I don't know. I mean, we're overbooked. Mm-hmm. Our expectations are substantially higher than they ever used to be. Mm-hmm. Also, you can bend shows. I mean, believe me, if I could just watch one show and then I had to wait till next week to watch the second one, I guarantee you I'd go to bed earlier. Mm, Absolutely. knowing I could go watch the next one and sometimes it's like, well, I just want to know what happens. I'm just going to watch five minutes. I always say 10 more minutes. And that's how doing Game of Thrones like that and like not sleeping for a year is probably why I just don't watch television. I just know I can't do it. Yeah, one hundred percent. What's interesting too is my Dan sent me a Instagram reel yesterday and was mm-hmm. like giggling from the other room. You know he likes to do this mm-hmm, when he sent he it does. to me, and I opened it and I'm like, oh gosh. And it's a woman and a mom or whatnot, but she is basically telling me through the screen that nobody cares if the kitchen counters are clean but you. Mm. And he's just giggling in the other room, and I'm like, I care. I right. care if the kitchen counters. He's like, well, you're going to lose sleep over the kitchen counters not being clean. And I'm like, yes, I am going to lose sleep over right. the kitchen counters not being clean. So some of it is my own doing mm-hmm. with I want my kitchen to be clean. Does it have to be clean? Is anybody like checking a box for me? No, but it's my expectation for self. Yeah. And it's so much more about aesthetics. This is, I'm going to be the one in the morning getting up and needing to make kids breakfast and I can't do it when it's filthy. No. And it's just, it's a sense that like so much more effort has to be put in by me 
for our lives to function. And I really do think that this sense of being disconnected from how much sleep we need starts when we are new moms. And we get I think it so starts much before then. Probably. Except you that we what? could nap before we were new moms. That's and I thing. did. I was thinking about this as we were going into this episode and we teach our kids how to sleep, right? Mm-hmm. Like I remember like helping my kids learn how to sleep or they naturally, it's actually a learned skill. It's not Mm -hmm. something you're born with the ability to do. You learn sleep patterns and sleep habits. So moms teach their babies. Mm -hmm. Then we get to like adolescence though. And I was thinking about, I'm like, nobody really retaught me sleep habits. Mm -hmm. Then you go to college and it all just goes out the door. Well, yeah. And you're just on like a... And then Frats. in your 20s, you're just on like a 10-year bender of like no right. sleep and bad it like bad patterns. Mm-hmm. Then you often become a new mom. So I almost think we're set up for failure after we stop being taught yeah. way back. Yeah. And I, girl, you're transitioning me well here. I think you've hit on something very important. We need to learn how to sleep well. And so when we come back after this break, first we're going to hit some of the terrible sleep norms and advice that we hear culturally. And then we're going to give you some actual tips on how to get more sleep. So I think that over time, I've gotten some really bad sleep advice. I don't know about you. This starts for me when we have a baby and you hear sleep when the baby sleeps. Wah, wah, wah. Like, how would you do that exactly? Because the I baby couldn't. sleeps for like 20 minutes at random intervals. Well, I'm such an extrovert too. That's when people would like come over and mm-hmm. I would want people to come over and I would want to socialize with people. And that was like the perfect opportunity to connect with my friends mm-hmm. or connect with somebody who was there. I was very much like everybody come over when I had a new baby where some people don't want that. I mm-hmm. very much wanted that. Now, looking back, I definitely wish I would have been sleeping during that time. But I was so excited to connect and be me in those yes. moments. And that is a worthy thing to do. It's not that that was the bad choice, right? It's just that you end up not being able to get enough sleep. sleep. And I also feel like this just makes it seem like for women, getting nighttime sleep like isn't vital. It is. You just aren't able to get it for a while. What bad sleep norms or advice have you heard? I think the worst is you can sleep when you're dead. By far the worst (laughs) advice I've ever heard. And the one thing I still hear all the time and my response back is always the same. But if you don't sleep, you will be dead. Right. So no, you, yeah, you will sleep when you're dead, but you need to sleep. So you're not dead. I mean, honestly, I don't think I would count death as sleeping like that to me does not, I don't know much about that. I kind of hope that I'm just like floating around somewhere. Yeah. I really hope I'm not just like gone. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't count that as the same as sleeping at all. And it does again, that's like the very American, you know, more production, more of everything is better, more, 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 except for more sleep, which is BS. How about this one? This again, get up in the morning to work out no matter how much sleep you've gotten. That one was one I bought into until about Mm -hmm. five years ago when I had a functional medicine doctor explain to me that if I'm not getting sleep and then I'm going to work out, that it's actually doing more damage to my body Mm -hmm. than if I didn't work out at all. And that was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that, now let me go ahead and be clear, that was my body. Doesn't necessarily mean everybody's body here. We're all very different. However, when you're not sleeping, your cortisol levels are usually very high. And then you're putting, you're exercising, which is putting more cortisol into your body. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you. I think that is every body. I really do feel that sleep is the foundation. It is the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy. We all need it. And a lot of this, like, get up and work out. Again, that's the American, like, you know, just push through the pain. And also it's part of bounce back culture for for women, for moms. Like, sure. don't miss your workout, girl, when in fact, if your cortisol is high, you're going to have trouble, like, getting back into your pre-baby clothes anyway. So we need time to do that. Um, how about this? If you're tired... Just have more coffee. 
Okay, I feel like I can't comment on that one. <laughs> yes, you can. Because Are you called out right now? Uh, um, because mm-hmm. I would be a giant hypocrite. I mean, yes, it's bad advice. However, I do it all the damn time. That's why I'm like, yes, it's bad advice, but it's one of my vices. And I'm drinking coffee with my Honest Women mug right now. Yeah, you are, girl. I chugged mine down already and I have more. However, I have started to cut my caffeine. And I could never have imagined that as an older, as a younger self. Now that I'm older, I'm like, I like what? don't even older. I'm too I'm like, tired. How old are you? <laughs> I have my words mixed up. I did not have enough caffeine this morning, obviously. Okay, fine. We're all addicted to caffeine. That's fine. But I do find I really do try not to have it after like noon because yeah. you actually need 8.8 hours to clear caffeine from your system. That's the most recent thing that I've heard. To be fair, I can have a cup of coffee with dinner and go right to sleep. That's a thing. That's a thing that's not true for everybody. It it's used to be a, true for me. It, it might be a problem. Just okay, like, how about this? If you're up like too activated from your coffee, just have a glass of wine to fall asleep. That one I will hands down say is the biggest bunch of bullshit out right. there. Mm-hmm. Biggest bunch of bullshit. I didn't say that very clear before. <laughs> I just want to make sure it was clear in this time around. <laughs> but it doesn't because it jacks your blood sugar levels. I mean, right. I sweat and like I can't sleep at all. I know I will fall asleep when I drink and it used to be that I could fall asleep and stay asleep or maybe I was waking up and I just didn't really process this because I could sleep in or whatever but I think there's something about turning 40 that you go what the hell man I had like one glass of wine and now I'm up two or three times in the night and I have anxiety And I'm wondering if I'm, you know, an idiot and like whatever thing I must have said because my one stupid glass of wine, it is just, uh, aging has taken all the fun out of life for me in this way. I don't think I ever slept well with alcohol. Your body's processing it and like trying to get it out. And so you never actually sleep Mm -hmm. when you drink alcohol. It's one of the fundamental things that I teach inside my office Mm -hmm. is alcohol messes up your circadian rhythm. You can't actually go into that deep level of sleep because your body's trying to process the alcohol out. That's also why, you know, eating a lot before bed, you Mm -hmm. don't often sleep a lot, right? You're trying to process it out. Your body can't actually rest. Right. Yeah. And do you think as a therapist, I mean, you said you talk about it. Do you ever avoid talking about things like caffeine and alcohol or you just, no, I go right there. I go right there, but I, I go, oh my God, I go right there with the asterisk of, Listen, I am also, this is something I struggle with, right? right? And I mean, everybody knows. People will bring me a coffee in my office half the time. They're like, oh, I (laughs) knew you just wanted one. I'm like, I know. So they know, but I'm like, listen, we just have to talk about it. If you're drinking a bunch of alcohol to go to sleep at night, let me just go ahead and debunk it. You're not actually sleeping. Mm -hmm. So can we just, you know, like. So true. So true. So I think we owe our listeners some actual helpful information here about how to sleep more and sleep better. Do you think we're qualified to do this based on the very beginning of our episode right now? I think we are qualified intellectually and we are living it in reality. So again, we hate tips and tricks, right? Because we never want to come down from on high and be like, this is what you need to do. We do want to offer some value and acknowledge that, like, you know, do as I say, not as I do. A little bit. Sometimes. Those okay. who cannot be taught teach. That's right. And those who cannot live right become therapists. <laughs> I don't think that's... <laughs> can we make that a shirt? We yes, we can. Okay. Yes, good. we can. That's going to be in our okay. merch one day. I, I've got a top five. And I'm going to count down. Number five, get your sleep environment right. What does your mm-hmm. environment look like if you're sleeping? Well... What do you need? It has to be cool. I cannot sleep in heat. Like I am like Mm -hmm. the old lady now with like a fan on me in the middle. Hell yeah. Oh, I hate being hot. I can't sleep when I'm hot. Yeah, no way. The fan is vital for the coolness, but also for white noise. I am a big fan of any sort of noise that's going to drown out anything happening in your home. I understand sometimes you're awake paying attention for like little kids. But have you ever noticed that if your kids make a noise, you wake up and your husband does not? Look, we're Uh, already like- Yeah. Yeah. 
we're already primed as women. Our brains are already primed to hear every single friggin' noise. And, you know, once you've gotten past a certain point, you had to drown that shit out. Or you'll never sleep again. I have to. I have to laugh a little bit because actually, I think it's reversed in our house a little bit. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because have I ever told you like if Dan is sleeping, I don't like. I have to very gently try and wake him up. Oh yeah. Or hear something because he's like ready to like kung fu fight somebody. Yes. Yeah. So he tends to hear more than I do. I will say with the baby crying or something when the babies were young. I mean, it was for sure me. Mm-hmm. But any like boom, 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 like within the house. He's like, whoa. He's got a startle response. Yeah, my dad, my, oh my gosh, I did it again. My Dan, my Dan, my husband, sleeping next to my husband is, does not wake up. He falls asleep in 0.2 seconds and does not wake up and it's not right. And so sometimes just to balance things out a little bit, one of our children is making noise and I just give him a good swift kick and let him know. I can only imagine if I kicked mine, he would like jump up and just start like, (laughs) <laughs> not even kidding and you have to go to youtube to see what i just did because the sound effects were probably not as good as or, my movements yeah they're very good jess i really like what you are doing right now Thank you. okay number four timing matters now i have read recently that while overall amount of sleep is important getting sleep between 10 p.m and 2 a.m is the most vital what do you that think about right. that no yeah. i think that's right uh, I think that whole go to bed early that people will say is is just not correct because mm. everybody has that different circadian rhythm and you really mm-hmm. have to know what your circadian rhythm is. I am definitely better with going to bed earlier. Nine would be amazing. Never happens. Mm-hmm. But, you know, 10, 1030 is, is 100% when I get my best sleep, when I'm asleep by then. If mm-hmm. I go past that, I'm almost like a baby who is then overtired and you yes. can't fall asleep. We are all like that, baby Jess. That is just true. I think of sleep as like a series of waves. You have to catch one. And so actually for me, when I have clients that are having trouble sleeping, I tell them, okay, after 7 p.m. tonight, don't do anything stimulating and pay attention to your body. As soon as you start to feel a sleepy, get in your bed and try to sleep. That is one of my reset tips for sleep because I think there's a wave that if you catch it, it's easy to fall asleep. And if you miss it, you end up awake for hours, probably thinking of your to-do list and all the ways that you're screwing up your children and, you know, all of these things, just your mind is running and you can't fall asleep. And bedging part two of Bridgerton. Some people do. Yes. sleeping. And how about number three, have a sleep routine. Oh, 100%. I mean, but that's one of those, duh, right? Mm -hmm. Where I hate to even say it because it is so duh, but it's also really important. Yeah. I know if I watch TV before bed, which I did last night and I've done all week, I just am not going to fall asleep as easy. Mm -hmm. I need, I don't need the stimulation. I need the downtime. I need to read a book. I've also learned that I can't read nonfiction before bed because it stimulates Mm. my brain versus fiction, like calms it down. It takes me away. It takes my mind off of things. Mm -hmm. Um, It needs to be dark in my room. It needs to be cool. I mean, I need my bedtime routine. It's why I always in college came home from the bars. I was not a fun person because I would always (laughs) go home. Sorry, all you random Joes, Jacks, and Jills. No, Jill. There was no Jill. I don't think there was a Jill. Anyways. Really? No? Eh, not that I remember. I mean, there could have been. I, I forget a little bit. But I had to go home and wash my face and brush my teeth and, like, shower. And, I mean, I've been very rigid with my routine since I was mm-hmm. in, I mean, as long as I can remember. It's very important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When our babies are little, we do bath time bottle, book, bed. They know what to expect. We know this is true. And yet my nighttime routine looks like chaos. And I think dialing into something, including for me, doing a brain dump before bed, like literally on paper, writing down the things that are in my brain can really help make this easy instead of being so hard. That's a great idea. I need to do a brain dump. That's a good call. Okay. And we've already hit number two, which is don't, don't do devices before the bedtime. Don't do it. Like I did last night. Why I know. And like I do most nights, if I, so I actually had to set a timer on my phone for apps and everything turns off at eight. And then of course I enter the little password to give myself 15 more minutes. And every night, 
every night that I do that, I hit the 15 minute mark. And if I put in an hour, I would hit the hour mark. It just, the things that we do that are um, engaging before bed, they displace sleep. And so we have to make sure we don't do those things. All right. So the number one tip to get more sleep, the big kahuna, this is everything. Everything rests on this. You have to decide to get more sleep. (laughs) You have to decide. We so often just ignore the fact that not sleeping is a problem. It is a problem, right? Like, I am not nice when I don't sleep. I have to laugh, right? Because it's so simple, but it is so true. You have to make it an actual goal Mm -hmm. that I am going to work to get more sleep. I think you also, though, in order to get more sleep, you have to figure out what your sweet spot is. Mm -hmm. Mine's seven to eight hours. Less than seven, not great. More than eight would would be okay, but I'm, I'm fine. If I get too much sleep, I also am off as well. Yeah. And I do believe there's a such thing as too much sleep. And we also know that you can't catch up on sleep anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't work. But seven to eight, you have to know your sweet spot. So maybe goal number one, too, could be figure out what your sweet spot is and then work to implement it. Yeah. And then decide because I really have to ask the question, like, if you know that sleep is important, if you know that there are health outcomes associated with not sleeping – If you know that honestly, like there's relationship outcomes associated with not sleeping every day in my office, women are coming in saying, I want to be more patient with my kids, but I'm just losing my shit. You know, I want to like be nicer to my husband, but I just can't. It's because you're under rested. I mean, at least that's a factor. You have to start there. So I, I wonder like, why can we not make this shift that it's important for us to get sleep as important as everybody else? Are you asking me? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Well, I think one of it is because we are a goal-oriented, outcome-driven society Mm -hmm. in America. We very much, right? Like, what'd you do today? What did Mm -hmm. you accomplish? What's still on the to-do list? Why didn't you get it done? That is drilled into us when we're kids. Yeah. Nobody says, how much did you sleep last night? Are you well rested? What mm-hmm. do you need to do in order to get it? It's all about outcome. Right. Yeah. It's all about what did you get done? Yep. And I really, I do think that we start with this superwoman stuff of like, I don't need sleep when our kids are really little. And that's just not true. Uh-uh. There is, you are as important as every single other person in your household. You are as worthy of care, of basic human functioning type care as your children are and as your husband is. And no, you cannot survive well with less than a reasonable amount, whatever that reasonable amount is for you. So you really have to decide that is important. And your me time cannot just be wedged into those margins of the day. It cannot. No, ma'am. It cannot be. And again, I think we just have to be really mindful of where we operate best as humans, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or as women, what is your optimal amount of sleep and work to achieve that? And also know that there's a grace. You have to give Mm -hmm. yourself grace, right? There's a couple nights this week that I was more on like the six to six and a half hours. Not great for me. However, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Does that mean I scrap it the night, the next night? No, Mm -hmm. you just try to re-implement those same strategies that have worked for you before. All right. I think we did it with sleep. Now I want to try something different. You guys have to go to YouTube and see your little fingers. I know the Mr. Burns. Yeah, the, like, I evil was like, fingers. oh my gosh, she just had these little fingers going. Oh yeah. Um, we want to try a new thing, a, a segment, if you will, called "Love It or Hate It" or "Love It and or Hate It," which is where Jessica and I get to talk about something that we love and something that we hate. And honestly, I have no idea how this is going to go. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> Jess, I'm starting with you. Do you want to start with love? Do you want to start with hate? What are you doing? Well, well so mine's pretty easy and basic, honestly, Good. because I'm going to Bridgerton and it's going to be one 
thing. I love it and I hate it. I'm I'm putting it all yes. all in that. Also, I feel like this love it and hate it is going to be hard for me because you know I'm Switzerland a lot and I can yeah. argue either side of the fence, mm-hmm. which is problematic for me sometimes in my brain. However, with Bridgerton Part Two, if you guys haven't watched it, I really want to know though what people think because I don't know if I love it or hate it. Oh, I know. I'm very conflicted on it. Part one, I loved. First, first four episodes or however many there were, I loved it. Because if you haven't watched Bridgerton, it's, yeah, a little bit of soft porn. Just going to throw it out there. <laughs> but it's romantic and it's fairy esque with like all the stuff we throw at you now days, which will be an episode on sex in the future mm-hmm. and all the expectations placed upon us. Bridgerton, you don't help with that. However... Mm-hmm. I loved it, right? It's that fairy tale. It's that love. It's the lust. It's the romantic nature of things. Part two, I I just don't know. Yeah. I'm like, there's so much drama. And I'm like, can everybody just like make out and like be hot together? Like, that's why I like (laughs) Bridgerton. Why is there so much drama? Why is there conflict? I don't like it. There we go. I am going to have to. I'm going to have to tune in. Going to have to tune in to that during the daytime not at night. And then we can discuss. Okay. I'm laughing because my love it and hate it is very related to, and I'm like, Andrea, this is what it's going to be every week. You're going to be talking about the same thing as love it and hate it. Cause again, that's how I think life goes. So here's my hate it. Okay. I hate the vibe in my house this week. It gives toxic masculinity. I do not know what is going on. I think part of it is that my daughter is at sleepaway camp and usually removing one of my children or even adding like four other children improves the vibe in the house because it just like mixes things up. Oh, but, but you I remove honestly, the only other estrogen in your house. That's it. Ugh. I think there's a testosterone dominance happening Ugh. in my house that Ugh. is just, it's not healthy and my boys are under rested right now. They're getting up early to be camp counselors. They're going straight to hours of volleyball. They come home. They are insane. There was a literal punching between two of my children and thank God, not in the face, but I was like, what is happening here? And just like you said, I realized as I was sitting at the table with these guys, then they were in like a, a diss battle. I'm like, what is this right now? Like they're just at each other all the time. I'm like, stop it. Stop. You can't say that. Stop it. You know, at the table, I was like, God, we need some estrogen in here. And then I realized it was time to get a new estrogen patch. And I have never slapped a patch on so fast. I was like, I almost left the table to run upstairs, slap on an estrogen patch and be like, God, You're help like, me. If you guys don't stop. I'm going to slap them on you. If you don't I'm gonna, knock it off. That's a great I'm telling idea. You, like I Ms. love Jess said, I'm going to slap this patch on you. If y'all don't take the testosterone down a notch. Yes. I love that idea. And I also love that even in the midst of being complete assholes, Teenagers will surprise you sometimes. So my 14-year-old says to me last night, as I'm getting ready to run out the door to do an errand at 8 p.m., which is a terrible idea, he says, do you ever feel like you're just stretched way too thin? And I was like, and it's low. It's lower than that because he's like, t- he's like he's puberty. Got yeah. going. And I was like, wow, like you're not the worst. You're not the worst. I love this about you. That's, That's so much nicer it. than my daughter would say it. My 10 year old, she goes, You ever think you try to do too much and then blame it all on us? That would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we could do a whole episode. She's a whole, not wrong. Yeah, we could do a whole segment on savage things that our kids say, but we will have to save that for next time. It is time to wrap up this episode of Honest Women, but make sure that you are subscribed because on Thursday, we will be an- answering listener questions related to this topic and you do not want to miss it.